Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel where black sheep meet and today I am going to be showing you how to make the Simplicity 1300 sewing pattern and today is just going to be part one since this is such a massive undertaking of a project. It's definitely not for the faint of heart since it has so many components. I originally bought this pattern shortly after it first came out and I loved it but I was just so intimidated about even starting it because I couldn't even understand anything in the directions after a certain point. So I finally decided to take the jump into this one and it's really cool to see my progress as far as completing commercial sewing patterns. But we have a lot to cover so let's just jump right into this and get started. So I only used three different fabrics to make it easier on myself. It does give you more options to use a couple more different variations and contrast fabrics, but there's only a small amount of notions for this one, which makes that part at least a little easier. So for the Simplicity 1300, I will be doing view A. I will be doing mine in a size 16. There are a ton of pieces with this pattern and it can be a little confusing where everything goes. So thankfully you can now use this video as a reference to look ahead and see what part of the piece you're looking for goes to and you can see what fabric I've done it in and you can compare it with the fabrics that you're using and where you wanna place them in this dress. Also for this project, I did really take my time cutting out all the pieces. I actually followed the diagrams of how to cut out each piece on your piece of fabric to help me for one wasting fabric as well as for two making sure I get the most out of all the fabric that I'm using so I would definitely recommend following those fabric cutting guides in your pattern. Also take note some of your pattern pieces will be placed on cross folded fabric so keep that in mind where basically you're folding it instead of how it comes folded off the bolt you're folding it the opposite way. Hopefully that makes sense without seeing it. And then some of your pieces will be cut on a diagonal slant. So make sure to follow your grain line directions. Once you have all your pattern pieces, go ahead and mark all the dots and notches on each piece that requires them. We're gonna start with the bodice front and bodice back pieces. So you should have two of each of these. And we're gonna do a stay stitch, which is basically a base stitch along that front bodice curve and the top neckline on the back. And this is gonna help from warping in these areas. Going to the front inset, we're gonna do a gathering base stitch along the top edge and the bottom edge. I will have a video linked below on how to do this that you can reference to later on. I'm going to take my guide for the inset and I'm gonna lay the front inset right on top with right side against wrong side. And I'm gonna gather up the bottom and top edge till the dots on both pieces line up. And I'm just gonna be pinning these edges down once I have the size that I am looking for. You can also tie off the end of these gathering threads that way your gathers don't come out while you're moving stuff around, but make sure that you have the correct size that you need because you cannot take this out. You would have to restitch everything again if you make a mistake. But it does help at this point when we start distributing the gathers, it helps keep the fabric from going out. So it makes it a little bit easier. But we're gonna do this to both sides till we like how it looks. And then on the top edge, I'm gonna grab my lace and I'm gonna line this up matching the raw edge of my lace to the raw edge of the top of the inset. And my lace is a little smaller, but I'm gonna place the raw edge of my lace just slightly above my seam allowance line so it's caught in the seam. And I will pin this down all the way across. And then you're gonna sew this on at the 5 8 inch seam allowance. We're gonna fold up our lace and iron the seam down toward the back of your inset. Iron this all down. Mm -hmm. 
then we're going to top stitch at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So starting at the dots on the front bodice pieces, we're going to line it up right sides together with the dots on your inset piece. You're going to match your raw edges and then pin this in place. And then do the same thing on the opposite side, matching up the dots. And then we're going to sew these sides at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So here we go, here's the front of our bodice now. Going to the tie ends, we're going to fold the long sides, right sides together and we're going to pin up the long open edge and the short triangular edge. Do this to both of your pieces. Sew these edges at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. We're going to cut off half of this seam allowance as well as a little bit of the corner of that top edge. Just so that corner turns out nice and sharp. Turn your tie end right side out. And you can use a pencil or a chopstick so you can help turn out those points. Lay out the edges of your ties nice and neat and then we're going to press this all in place. We're going to do a 5 8 inch seam allowance base stitch along the open edges. Going to the back bodice piece, we're going to find the dots that are marked there and this is where we're going to place our tie ends. Make sure that the tie end is facing the correct direction. And we're going to pin this in place on both sides. Sew these on at the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Taking the bodice side back pieces, we're going to line up that curved edge right sides together with the back bodice piece and it's going to be the side that the tie end is attached. Now the edges of these pieces are not perfectly straight, but if you take your time maneuvering around the curves, you can definitely get them to fit together correctly. So it will have a slight warped look at the top, which is fine. Do this to both sides. So I'm going to open up these sides now and I'm going to add the front bodice piece lining up right sides together with the bodice side back pieces. Sew these four seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open all of the seams, making sure your ties are facing toward the back. Going to the shoulder seams, we're going to pin these with right sides together. And sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Taking the front facing with the wrong sides face up, we're going to lay on the inner facing pieces on top of each one and we're going to iron these on. And then we're going to add the inner facing as well to the back of our back facing pieces. So we're going to attach the back to the front and you want to do them right sides together but you want to pay attention that the curves go opposite. So you don't want it to be one continuous circle, you want them to be one way and then the back ones go in another direction. Mm -hmm. 
Sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Press your seams open. We're going to do a base stitch at a 5 8 inch seam allowance along the outer curves. And here I did finish this edge as well with my serger just to keep things nice and neat. So I'm going to fold over this same edge just after that 5 8 inch seam allowance that you sewed and I'm going to press it down. So you can see here it's just after my seam allowance. Sew these down at a 1 4 inch seam allowance. So this is what we should have. Going to our bodice section, we're going to lay the facing right sides together and we're going to go along that front edge of the bodice front and pin it up toward the back matching up your shoulder seams. Sew these on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. We're going to iron the seam allowance and the facing away from the bodice. Do this to both sides. And then we're going to top stitch the facing down to the seam allowance using a 1 8 inch seam. So this is what you'll have. Now if you're not finishing this inner edge you're going to cut off half of the seam allowance and you're going to put a few clips into the curves to help the fabric of the curve lay a little more nicely. Then we're going to iron the facing in toward the bodice to make sure it's all pressed in place. At the bottom, you're going to pin the facing to your bodice. and you're going to base stitch the facing down at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. At the shoulder seams, you're going to match up the seams and do a stitch in the ditch. Make sure to do this on the outside though when you're stitching in the ditch. That way if it's not correctly laying on the inside it won't matter. You just don't want to see the stitches on the outside. So you'll see it's hidden there in the seam. Going to the neck ruffle pieces, I'm going to finish the edges with my serger, but you can do this how you like. And I'm using a contrasting fabric so it helps tie them in a little bit better. And I'm going to do this down the length of each side. Do a base stitch down the middle of each piece. So this is what we should have. And then once again going to that bodice front neckline, we're going to start gathering this neck ruffle and we want to get it to the length of the neckline. We're going to line up the center of this ruffle at about a 1 4 inch seam allowance on the bodice. Now I folded the end here but you can leave that open because that's going to get sewed in later on. So go ahead and start pinning on your ruffle, making sure that all your gathers are distributed evenly. You're going to go all the way to the back and at the back 
This is where you will fold over this edge and you wanna make sure that there is a 5 8 inch seam allowance from the edge. I didn't do it right here, but here's afterward when I fixed it. But you wanna have the seam allowance in the back, open only. Sew these on at the 1 4 inch seam allowance down the center of your ruffles. Taking my braided trim, I'm gonna lay this right down the middle over that seam. Do this to both sides. And I'm gonna stitch down the middle. At the bottom of the bodice, I'm going to base stitch at a 5 8 inch seam allowance over these ruffles. Going to the peplum back, I'm gonna lay them right sides together. And at the back seam, I'm gonna measure up about five to six inches, and I'm gonna place a mark, and that's what I'm gonna pin up to. Open this up, and then we're gonna take our peplum front pieces and lay them right sides together with those outer edges, pinning them in place. Sew these three seams at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Remember in the back, only up to that mark that we've made. Iron open the seams. Okay, at the top, we will do a gathering base stitch. And then all along the outer curve, we're gonna hem it up and you have a 5 8 inch hem allowance. The peplum ruffles, we're gonna start with two, laying them right sides together, matching up one edge. Pin it. And then go ahead and go to the opposite open end and you're gonna continue laying strips right sides together, pinning them in place. So essentially we want one long strip. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Press all of the seams open. And then just like the other ruffle, you're going to finish the edges and you're gonna do a gathering base stitch down the middle. So this is my strip now. Going to my center seam on the strip, I'm gonna match this up to the outer back seam of my peplum. And once again, I want the gathered base stitch to line up at that 1 4 inch seam allowance from the edge of the peplum. Start gathering up your ruffle, and we want this to match up to the same size as the edge. Once you have the size that you want, distribute your gathers evenly, pin it all in place. And we're gonna base stitch this on at the 1 4 inch seam allowance down the center of the ruffle. Then you're gonna take your braided trim and we're gonna sew this down the center of the ruffle as well, like before. Take your bodice and going to the bottom edge of your bodice, we're gonna lay it right sides together with the top edge of your peplum. Match the back seams first and then you're gonna move forward and match the front edge of your peplum with the front of your bodice, trying to match those ruffles as centered as you can get them. And do the same to the opposite side. Pull up the gathers on the top of the peplum to match the length of the bottom edge of the bodice. Distribute your gathers evenly and pin this in place all the way around. And as you can see on mine in the front, my centers are a little off, but that's okay since we have a bow going right over it, but you wanna get it as close as you can. Sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron the seam 
up toward the bodice. Moving on to the zipper. As a side note, I am using the wrong type of zipper and it is the wrong size. So yours will go a little longer than mine and yours will be an invisible zipper. But I, this is what I had, so this is what I used. But you're gonna take your iron and you wanna roll out your coils and iron them outward first before we attach the zipper. So to get this laying correctly, at the back edges of your dress, Face your zipper right sides together. I'm going to lay the left side of my zipper matching that raw edge to the raw edge of my dress. Make sure that that silver notch is 1 4 inches below the top edge of the bodice. And I'm going to pin this all the way down. I'm gonna sew this on so your teeth should line up at the 5 8 inch seam allowance. When I get about three or four inches below the bottom, I'm gonna pull up my zipper around my sewing foot and then I can continue sewing down to the bottom. So I'm gonna switch out my regular foot for my zipper foot. And as you can see, as I'm sewing down, once I get about three or four inches from the bottom, I'm going to lift my presser foot, move up the zipper head, and then I can continue sewing to the bottom. And you want to sew just past that little notch. So opening up the zipper again, right sides together with the opposite edge, making sure the notch is one fourth below the top edge and it should be in toward your bodice to make sure that you have it laying correctly. I'm gonna pin this side down. And then before I sew it, I'm going to test my zipper to make sure it's lined out correctly. And once it looks good, then we will also sew this on with the teeth at the 5 8 inch seam allowance. For the rest of the seam that you have open under the zipper, you're going to pin up matching the raw edges. Remember mine is a lot bigger than what it should be. And you're going to sew these together at the 5 8 inch seam allowance, making sure to stop and backstitch where that notch is on your zipper. So I'm just right behind it. And this is what it will look like. Iron open that seam we just sewed. At the top of the zipper, you're gonna fold that extra bit of the zipper over the top edge, and then you're gonna fold it under that seam allowance. That way it's a nice finished edge. Do this to the opposite side as well, clipping them both in place. We're gonna slip stitch this closed together. Taking my hook and eye, I'm gonna place the hook on one side and the eye on the other of that little top open section. And I will hand sew both of these on. Going to the upper sleeve, I'm gonna do a gathering base stitch on the top between the three dots and along the bottom between those two dots. Taking one of my lower sleeve pieces, I'm going to gather up the bottom gathered edge of my upper sleeve and I want it to match up with the top edge of the lower sleeve. And you will have dots there that you can match up. Distribute the gathers once you have the correct size. Then take these pieces and lay them right sides together, still matching those same edges. And then you can pin them in place. 
Sew these edges at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Opening up the sleeve, I'm going to place those outer edges right sides together, pinning them up. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. For the sleeve flounce, fold those straight edges right sides together and pin these up on both sides. Sew these edges at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and iron open the seams. At the bottom edge, I'm going to fold it over 3 8 inches and iron this down all the way around on both sleeves. So essentially we are starting to hem this up. Sew this down at a 1 4 inch seam allowance. Then I will fold it over another 3 8 inches or just after that seam allowance we just made. And once again I will iron this down all the way around. Taking my lace trim once again, I am going to fold over that raw open end toward the back and starting at the seam, I am going to sew on my trim at either a 1 4 to 3 8 inch seam allowance depending on the size of your trim. Remember mine is a little smaller so I have a smaller seam allowance. But you are going to finish off the opposite edge the same way. Going to the sleeve upper flounce, we are going to fold these over right sides together like the last ones, pinning up those edges and we are going to sew these at the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Grabbing the sleeve upper flounce ruffles, we are going to take 2 strips, pinning them right sides together on each end. We are going to sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seams on the flounce and the ruffles. Finish off the edges and do your base stitch down the middle like before all the way around. And then you are going to also hem up the bottom of your sleeve flounces as well just like we did with the peplum hem. Folding my sleeve flounce at the seam allowance, I am going to find the center on the opposite end and I am going to mark this. Taking one of the seams with the opening of my gathered base stitch, I am going to match this seam up with the back seam of the flounce. Again you want the base stitch to line up at the 1 4 inch seam allowance of the flounce. So I will pin this here to keep it from moving and then going to the opposite seam, I am going to match this up with the mark that we made on the front. Gather up both sides of the ruffle to match up the edge of the flounce. Distribute your gathers evenly and pin it all in place when you are happy with the placement. Sew these on with the base stitch at the 1 4 inch seam allowance down the center of the ruffle. And then of course we are going to take our braided trim and we are going to sew this down the middle on both sleeve flounces. Taking the top sleeve flounce, you are going to lay the lower sleeve flounce inside with right side against wrong side. Starting with the seam allowance first and then you are going to pin around the rest of the upper opening. Do this to both sides and sew it on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Take your upper sleeve, turning it right side out. Take your sleeve flounce and turn it wrong side out. Tuck the upper sleeve into the sleeve flounce, matching your seams again and then you are going to pin them together around the opening. Sew these on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and finish off the edge. So your sleeves are done and at this point I will call this video done for now. Otherwise this video is going to be a million years long but I will be back with the rest of the assembly of the dress, the bows and the skirt in part 2. So make sure that you subscribe 
and that you hit the bell so that you get notified when I upload the part two of this video. But thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you back in the next one. Bye! Thank you.